I ordered an attack. Your troops refused to attack. My troops did attack, sir, but they could make no headway. Because they didn't try, Colonel. I saw it myself. Half of your men never left the trenches. A third of my men were pinned down because the fire was so intense. Don't quibble over fractions, Colonel. The fact remains that a good part of your men never left their own trenches. Colonel Dex, I'm going to have ten men from each company in your regiment tried under penalty of death for cowardice. Penalty of death? For cowardice! They've skimmed milk in their veins instead of blood. Well, it's the reddest milk I've ever seen. My trenches are soaked. That's that just about enough out of you, well, I'm not going to mince words and stand Colonel out. Colonel Dax, if you continue of... in this manner, I shall have to place you under arrest. I believe the Colonel has a point, even though he makes it rather bluntly. This is not a trial, but it does bear certain aspects of one, and Colonel Dax technically is cast in the role of the defense. In view of the gravity of the charges, a court of law would grant him all possible latitude in presenting his case. Latitude is one thing. Insubordination, another. I am merely offering an opinion, General. Please do not feel constrained to accept it. I am perfectly willing to accept it, General Brula. I'm sorry, sir. I certainly didn't intend to be insubordinate. My only aim is to remind you of the heroism these men have shown on every occasion in the past. We're not talking about the past. We're talking about the present. But don't you see, sir, they're not cowards, so if some of them didn't leave the trenches, it must have been because it was impossible. They were ordered to attack. It was their duty to obey that order. We can't leave it up to the men to decide when an order is possible or not. If it was impossible, the only proof of that would be their dead bodies lying in the bottom of the trenches. They're scum, Colonel. The whole rotten regiment. A pack of sneaking, whining, tail-dragging curs. You really believe that, sir? Yes, I do. That's exactly what I believe. And what's more, it's an incontestable fact. Why not shoot the entire regiment? <laughs> I'm perfectly serious. Well, now, Colonel, you're missing the point entirely. We don't want to slaughter the French army. All we want to do is to set an example. Oh, well, if it's an example you want, then take me. Take you? Yes, sir, if it's an example you want, one man will do as well as a hundred. The logical choice is the officer most responsible for the attack. Come now, Colonel, I think you're overwrought. This is not a question of officers. Paul, we don't want to overdo this thing. Suppose we just make it a dozen. I was talking of a hundred men. Now we're down to twelve. Paul, let's not haggle over this thing anymore. Let's get it settled once and for all so that we can all live with it. Oh, perhaps I was a bit too anxious to see proper justice meted out. I've spent my entire life in the army. I've always tried to be true to my principles. That's the only mistake I can ever be accused of. I'll settle for this. Have the company commanders select one man from each company in the first wave. Three and all. Well, that's very reasonable of you, Paul. The court-martial will meet at the Chateau at three o'clock this afternoon. Mm. Will that be convenient for you, General? Oh, I won't be there, Paul. You won't be there? No, I think it's best that you handle this matter on your own. Probably so. General Miro, if it's at all possible, I'd like to be appointed counsel for the accused. I'll take the matter into consideration. Oh, we can permit that, Henry Paul. Of course we can. Consider it settled, Colonel. Thank you, sir. Well, noon straight up, Paul. I hope that you can stay for lunch, Colonel. George, I'm afraid the Colonel won't have time. And don't deny it, Paul. You've been hiding this man, keeping him for your own. I think that was very selfish of you. Thank you for your courtesy, General, but I'm afraid there isn't much time between now and three o'clock. Of course, Colonel. I shall look forward to the pleasure of seeing you again. Thank you.